All right, guys, welcome back to another video where today we actually just received a new aquarium co-op package. Got some plants and one of them is a plant that I have been dying to get for the 125. We also ordered a brine shrimp separator. This wasn't from aquarium co-op, but it was from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. This, however, was from aquarium co-op and there'll be some videos coming up on this thing and it'll be the first time i've ever hatched out brine shrimp so that'll be pretty cool if you're interested in that make sure you subscribed in the rest of the aquarium court package we got some really cool stickers got a guppy cherry shrimp bristle nose pleco which is really neat bosmani rainbow fish some easy root tabs that I've been adding to the 125 every few months. And then we also got some of the easy planters. You may have seen this on Aquarium Co-op's YouTube channel, but it basically prevents fish from digging up plants. And it also looks really, really cool as well. So this is probably gonna be something that I will utilize in this 20 gallon tank, which right now I'm using as a quarantine tank. So yeah, first off, we're gonna get the Java Fern in the 125 and my aim is to put it right there in between the two pieces of wood i think it'd just fit in really really nicely there and kind of be a nice centerpiece for the tank so let's crack on So I just finished wedging in the Java Fern and you can see already that the Praycox rainbows are incredibly interested in it. Male seems to be chasing the females quite a lot, which is really, really cool to see. And overall, I just really like how the Java Fern is looking in this tank. So happy, happy days. Hoping we might get some breeding action from these at some point and if I need to separate them and put them in a different tank with a spawning mop, I'm certainly interested in doing that. Um, could maybe do that in one of the 20 gallon longs that I've got and I've also got a 33 gallon long as well so maybe that might be something that I do soon. In terms of the easy planters, these are how they look. As you can see from here, it just looks like a rock, really, really detailed. And I'll probably put this on top of this aquarium gravel as I think it'll match really, really nicely. And I've actually got two of them. So this will be something really neat, I think, that I can add to a tank and just kind of pop a plant straight in there. So that's going to be coming in the near future. In this tank right now, like I said earlier, it's just being utilized as a quarantine tank. I got a natural colored looking angelfish who's a little bit freaked out right now but i think he's gonna look awesome in the 125 and he'll definitely stand out compared to the bright whiter colored ones that i've got also got three more black neon tetra i've got a bristle nose in there and then i got a male empire gudgeon to go along with the female that i've got in the 125 so that'll be a pretty cool thing to add and then after i've added them i can put the easy planter in this tank and go from there but everything is going pretty good with those so hopefully i'll have them in the 125 soon i'm currently treating them with general parasite cure this is a product that i got from everything aquatic and it's basically a mix of metro and prazi um, these two are meant to be basically a two drug fits all or fixes all kind of thing um, so I definitely advise that for any 
of you guys that are bringing in new fish from fish stores, always good to quarantine. Another thing we've got going on in the fish room right now is I'm actually growing some immersed Monte Carlo. Really like this plant and as you can see I'm getting some pretty good growth just with this basic light. I think that was from one of the 10 gallon kits that I got when I first got into the hobby. Um, everything else is doing pretty good. I did move over a fish that was quarantined in the 20 gallon um everything was fine and then i've got the craziest story for you um that'll be coming in a video soon um but that's why he's kind of in that netting still looking to sell these luanda that you see in this 33 gallon long hopefully i've got a few people interested and one of them might be coming to pick up the luanda this weekend and he's actually a breeder of fish really into africans so um, hopefully that'll come through because I'd really like to sell them to him. Um, 125, uh, once we turn the lights on, he's just looking absolutely awesome. Love this tank. The angel fish are all growing. I've still got nine in there. Um, we'll eventually be going to 10. Um, once I get the natural colored one in there, just want to make sure he's all good before putting him in there. Um, and everything else in this tank is doing awesome. Loving the rainbow fish, might breed them at some point. Um, the pearl garam is doing great as well. Think it's a female, um, so doesn't quite have the color that the males do, but I still really like a um, really cool fish. And then I've got one Bolivian ram in there who's actually been in there the longest now. Um, I think I might get one more Bolivian ram or two more Bolivian rams. I think the footprint of the tank is definitely big enough for that. If you've got any suggestions for me on stocking, please leave them in the comments. I'll definitely look into it. And if you've got any oddball fish that are, you know, pretty cool, like say a peacock gudgeon or an empire gudgeon, um, you know, something along those lines that you think would be cool in this tank, definitely let me know because I'll for sure be interested in it. Anyway, guys, this is it for today's video. Make sure you tune in next week and subscribe if you haven't already because the story that I've got to tell you about the fish that you saw in the net in the 55 gallon is just absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, make sure you tune in for that while I bait all these fish because I'm pretending to feed them, boy. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.